Ho, ho, ho. Only a few weeks until the big man comes down the chimney, hopefully to bring you some bourbon. But today, I'm bringing you Hardin's Creek Boston Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Is it any good? Is it worth the MSRP and the hunt that people are trying for it? Ho, ho, hope you stay around and find out. Thanks for coming back. Today, like I said, we're reviewing Hardin's Creek Jim Beam, the Boston Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 110 proof, 17 years old, or 204 months, that I picked up for 170 plus shipping, surprisingly, off a share pour when I also got the Ben Holiday, a soft red wheat whiskey. So I was excited because I've seen this on unicorn auctions and some other sites, $350, $400, and it was getting hard to find. I was like, you know, I was really a big fan of the 15 year old regular Hardin's Creek. Couldn't find the Claremont or the Friedmont. I think those are the names of them. Could not find those. So I was able to get this and I said, well, you know what? Saw the reviews and I said, 17 years old, $170. Well, again, like we've talked about, $10 per year. And now it's even getting to $15 per year. But I was like, Ugh. I like older whiskeys. I have uh, four roses that I'm sipping over there. That's an OESO, but it's 14 years and 11 months. But it's, it's that richness that these products being aged as long as they are give to you. So I said, you know, I'm going to pull the trigger. Got it. They shipped it, came in the tin. But for me, I aren't really a fan of the tins or the bookers, boxes and that. I just, in the trash, I don't care. That's just me. Like I said, if it's got a cap, it gets a cork. For me, it's what the juice is like inside. Now, like I said, this is the Kentucky series, Boston, and I heard a lot of great things about it. I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the trigger. It's got like this cool cap, a little leather, little leather harness so your whiskey doesn't fall out, which I highly doubt. We know that the mash bill is 77% corn, 13% rye, and 10% malted barley. Got a little bit in the history, got a little bit in the bottle. Like I always say, what is the juice like inside? Let's get into that first nose and see if $170 is worth it. Ooh. Baking chocolate, crisp cinnamon, like a taffy note, but not like a pink taffy, almost like a, a sweet, to me, cotton candy taffy. This has been out for about 20, 25 minutes, but this is just coating the glass. The legs, it's like like little tears. It is seriously, it smells citrusy. Like a like a to me, like a like a light citrus note, but an underlying dark fruit, like your dark plums and raspberries and blueberries. It it smells honestly, it smells awesome. 170, like we've talked about before. These prices, when I started getting into this just before the Rona hit and late 19 and in 20, everybody kind of rushed out there and started grabbing whatever bourbons they could because, in all honesty, all the breweries were shut down. So no one was doing anything. No one was making any beers. And I was into craft beers like huge. You could walk out to my garage back then and you could pull out KBSs and you could pull out craft beers and IPAs. I mean, you name it. I had glasses. They all went into little special things. I was the beer snob. I really was. But when they started getting into Fruit Loops and Captain Crunch and everything under the sun, I said, you know what? There's got to be something different. Something that if I open it, it'll last. Thus, going into my bourbon craze, as my wife would say, my bourbon midlife crisis. But that remains to be seen. We got into the nose. Let's get into the first taste. Oh, slight peppercorn, but an, and now I know what they say when they mean an earthy note. Like if you've ever, I'm a builder and an architect, do a lot of stuff in the field. And if you ever dig up undisturbed soil for a long time and you kind of pick it up and you bring it close up, you get an earthy note which means it's been undisturbed for over 20 years. And it has a certain, I'm going to say, say herbaceous or woody note, but it's earthy, it's deep, it's rich. That's what that taste reminded me of. It just, 
it had such an amazing flavor for 17 years old that you get that Jim Beam, that Jim Beam note, but it's so weighted and deep and rich. And the finish is just going. Kentucky Hug hits here and just is gone. You just get a syrupy rye spice thickness left in your mouth. It is not unpleasant in any way. And I really like the original Hardin's Creek that I have down there. I think that was 15, was 184 months. So I think it was 15 years. This is amped up, but it's dark and rich. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can possibly even see the bottle. It's, it's, it's thick. It's deep. It's rich. It's got a dark amber color. It's beautiful, honestly. Enough for the rambling. Let's get in for a second taste. You get a slight leather note, but almost like a fresh leather, not like an old chewy leather mitt or wallet or even jacket you pulled out of the dusty mothball closet. A little bit of caramel on the back end, a little bit of cinnamon right on the mid palate and the tongue, like right in here, right at the beginning. But it is again thick and chewy and viscous and decadent. Like I've said before, I like savory and sweet, and this is hitting every single note that I honestly love. I This is beyond good. I had a couple pours out of it. A buddy of mine, when I got this a little over a week ago, uh, same when I got the uh, Ben Holiday, he's like, hey, I really like Jim Beam this. And I said, said, sure. And he took a sip and the look on his face was like, that's not Jim Beam. I go, dude, it's 17-year-old Jim Beam. He goes, that's, that's amazing. That's so thick and dense. It's not like there and gone. I said, no, it's not 80 proof, dude. It's literally 110 proof. He goes, but it doesn't drink 110. I said, that's the point. As you get up in those ages, some do and some don't, but this one does not. It is beautifully balanced, decadent, mouth coating and thick. If you can find this in the bar and get a two ounce pour, even an ounce pour for anywhere between like 30 to 50, I know it's kind of pushing it again, like we talked about, pick it up, try it. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know below if you've had this one or the, any of the other ones. Tell me what you think. My name is Brian. This is the Average Whiskey Drinker channel. Like I always say, find a bottle, open the bottle, and enjoy that bottle because good whiskeys are always meant to be shared, especially with the holidays coming up. And if you have a party, bring some of them out. Introduce them. If they're new, give them the lower proof. If they're experienced, give them the 90 to 100. If they're very experienced, you know what I'm talking about. Give them the 110 to 125. That's their wheelhouse. Thank you so much, and I will talk with you all soon. Cheers.